We had always heard of this place from friends, from great fishermen, the myth of giant brown trout sipping dry flies under rhododendron trees. I had always wanted to go here, but for some reason, we had never pulled the trigger. But this time, I had recently talked to my mentor, Rob, and he had started talking about this place, talking about how amazing it was once you got high up in the mountains past all the tourists, about how much pocket water there was, and how many fish there were to catch in every single one of them. So it got me thinking, with endless dry fly hatches going on all summer long, I gotta get up there. So my college roommate Jack gave me a call. He said he wanted to go up to the mountains and trout fish, and I knew exactly where we were going. So with a little overnight planning and a cabin rental, we packed our bags and we were on our way to go catch the mythical brown trout. Jack and I hadn't seen each other for a little over a year. Jack had recently just became a father, and both of our jobs are really taxing, so we don't get to see each other much. So this is very exciting for me to know that I'm gonna have the mountains, my buddies, and some fish all to ourselves. So we had a couple laughs, a beer, and then we were on our way to go chase these fish. A common theme for this entire trip was hiking. And man, it seemed like it never stopped. But along with the hiking came the most immaculate views. Rob had warned us against stopping anywhere lower than six miles up in the mountains and said that it would be fished out and too warm. He told us that we would see it and we would want to fish it very bad because it is very tempting and it looks amazing. But being the fisherman I am, you know, I couldn't help it. And we spent most of our first day fishing lower than six miles into the mountains. This came with its consequences. No fish. Rob was right. This water does look amazing, but the fish just are dormant. It was really crazy to me, and it hurt me because Jack had never caught a trout on the fly before, and that was obviously the mission of the entire trip. The amazing views and waterfalls of the first day made not catching fish just a little less bitter. And the camaraderie with each other after not seeing each other for a long time in a cool stream in the middle of the summer, what more as a man could you really ask for? As it got later in the day, we said bye to the nature, to the wildlife, and to the fish that we couldn't catch, and decided it was time to go start a fire and make a nice warm meal and spend some time hanging out together, considering we don't get to do that much. Now Jack and I spent a lot of time together in college building fires, whether it be on the river shore or in our backyard, because in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, there quite simply just isn't that much to do. So creating a fire was nothing new to us, and before we knew it, we had this one burning high. Yeah. With a couple brats on the grill, 
and even a couple hamburgers. We sat around, listened to good music, and then it was time to feast. What? Look at them bird. And as the fire began to dwindle, we all decided it was time to rest our eyes and prepare for the big day that we had tomorrow. The one thing in the back of my mind was, I know Davis is coming and I want to stay up for him, but he's going to be here so late that it's almost not worth it. And being the gentleman that he is, Davis showed up after we were all asleep and he decided instead of waking us up, he was going to stay up late, tying flies, and ended up sleeping in his car. This is important that Davis showed up, because Davis is the trout fisherman. And Davis always is going to have multiple forms of fly fishing with him at any time. The dry flies were endless this day, and as we were walking up, before we got to the six miles, yet again, I got tempted into walking down the side of the gorge and taking a couple casts as some surfacing fish. And I was only gonna take one cast, I promised the boys. But as they surfaced again, if you know anything about me, you know I had to take a couple more. With no fish, we decided we weren't stopping again until we got to where we needed to be. Because this was the only way that we were gonna have the type of day that we were anticipating having. The walk was cruel, and it took us a long time to get where we needed to be. The sun was shining down hard at this point, and it got to a point where the trailhead ended, and we were going to have to just walk through the water. As we all sat in a circle, taking a water break, we all contemplated how crazy it was to think that there was literally no civilization within 10 mile radius of us in any direction. We were simply alone. Nothing but nature, the sky, the sound of the wind and insects, and big wild brown trout. Ironically enough, the first couple fish that Davis caught during the day were rainbows, and wild rainbows at that. He was finding them in swift pocket water, hiding behind little stumps and rocks. So we'll clip all this middle part. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good Finally, Jack hooked up too. This day was already much better than the day before, and we had really just started. Beautiful fish. That is, bro. Good stuff, my man. Our whole goal was to get Jack a fish, and during the opening hours of the day, he accomplished that. He knocked it off the list. A big, buttery, juicy, wild brown for his bucket list to be checked off. Perfect. Look at that hook set. As Davis picked off every single rainbow in the stream, Jack and I worked our way upstream, chasing pocket water, trying to find that big brown that we were all there for. Unfortunately, we saw a couple but they were just snooty. They wanted nothing to do with our flies. Can you wait, buddy? Good stuff. I said, huh? Nowhere he was sitting. During this day, we caught fish in two different ways. We caught them on an indicator rig for slow deep water, and then Euro nymphing for all the fast pocket water that we couldn't hit with anything else. We did throw the dry, however, again, no cigar, which was a bummer for me because that is why I wanted to come. I wanted to watch these fish come up and slap a yellow sally, shattering the surface of the water. I'm glad I have waiting socks on today. Yeah. Well, Caleb busts ass. Let's see if we can do this with oh. no foliage. Hey, Lob, you left something. Other sheep. Mm. I 
I got a net right here. Look at these guys. Oh my goodness. There's the mop flat. He's a fatty. We fished about a three mile stretch of the river, eight to ten miles up in the mountain range. All right, now you We found it. rainbows, we found browns, we saw big ones, but we just couldn't connect. I missed multiple fish that were in that 16 to 18 class. Yeah, it's been a rocky journey up here, but uh, seems like we've gotten into some fishy territory now, so we're seeing what we can see. Our buddy Tim, who was there the same day as us, he fished downstream. And lo and behold, he catches a 22 inch Butterball Brown. So we know they're there, it's just a matter of figuring them out and catching them the way that we want to catch Beautiful them. Beautiful fish. Preferably on dry flies and shadows. But as the day progressed, it became more and more apparent that that just wasn't gonna happen and that we had already fished out most of the aggressive fish in the stretch of river that we were on. As the sun started to go down, we decided to slowly start working our way back with nothing in mind except for maybe hitting a couple of those spots that we knew we weren't supposed to. One in particular I had in mind that we saw on the way up and the boys wouldn't let me stop at but with no time constraints and just a couple boys hanging out in the mountains, I decided, what the heck, I'll take a cast. So on my first cast, I knew we were in a good spot because I got a follow. On the second one, I hooked up, but he got off right before I netted him. And on the third one, boom, I got him and got him solid. It was a beautiful Smoky Mountain brown trout. And because I stopped where I stopped, Davis obviously had to stop at one more spot, where he picked off a nice, beautiful micro rainbow trout. Yeah, that brown looks beautiful. As we got back to the car, Davis made it apparent that we needed to stop by a local fly shop, one, to give them some business, but two, to stack up on some fly tying materials for the things that we would need for the next day. After picking up some hooks and some bead heads, we were on our way home to make dinner, start a fire, and tie some flies.
This time, we started a fire the one way my dad always taught me how. Singe the cameraman's eyebrows. I get killed, now the KFC. <sighs> there goes Mike's eyebrows. As the fire was running good, get down there with him, and I was putting steaks on the grill, Mike, our camera guy, decided he wanted to take a couple casts out behind the house. And lo and behold, on his second cast, bang, he hooks up into a nice one, a nice wild brown. And as Davis is guiding him to get the fish in, I come sprinting down with the camera, and I know that this is a huge moment for not only Mike, but for us to have caught a fish directly behind the house next to a fire while cooking steaks. It really just couldn't even get any better. The camera guy got a couple good trout now too. So as we got a quick release on the fish, we ate our steaks, we hung out by the fire and tied some flies, we knew we were spent and it was time to get ready for the next day physically and that meant sleep. We woke up the next day, bright and early, to clean up the cabin because that was our last day staying there. We had to check out by 10, and that was perfect for us because the river was right on the way to the highway. And our last goodbye to the cabin. It's good while well it lasted. But, time to head to the creek for the last day. See if we can't get on them good. Not forgetting anything. We're all good. Today, we had one goal in mind and one goal only. And that was to catch a fish on a stinking dry fly. But again, as we worked our way up, before we got to our point where we needed to put in, I got tempted for the third day in a row. This pool looked so juicy I couldn't pass it up. Thankfully, it finally prevailed and I finally hooked up into a nice wild brown trout in the low water when Rob told me not the fish. Got it? Okay, then net. Go brown. Start off the morning. Let's get a release on. Oh my on. god. You ready? Yeah. You want to go under? Yeah. Good fish. Way to start it out. Bow. We went up another creek that supposedly has brook trout in it. Although we didn't see any brook trout, we saw some amazing landscape and some beautiful waterfalls. But it was time to get back on course and get to where we were headed. And that was to catch a trout on a dry fly high up in the Great Smoky Mountains. What you got? After spot two, how do you feel about being a short king? Spot two, um, once again a bust. Still living the short king life though. Hey. Give me a pound on me that Me too, one. brother. Oh yeah. It's oh, all yeah. good. Got this tall dude up here. Doesn't understand what it's like. He'll never be a short king.
Ты сам все помнишь. When we finally arrived to where we were heading, lo and behold, there they were, trout sipping on the surface of the water. So Davis and I found a way that we could get around behind them and stalk them and throw a dry fly at them without them even knowing we were there. We started with big flies because that's what we had heard they liked. They were very opportunistic and you wanted them to see what they were eating. But as I threw it over and over, they wanted nothing to do with it. And they'd come look at it, but they didn't want to take. And as my dry flies would float over their head and never failed, they came up three feet behind it and hit whatever fly was on the surface that was legit. So it came to a point where all these fish were around me actively eating, and they wouldn't take my fly. So I asked Davis, you think we should put some smaller flies on? And he agreed. So we put a small yellow sally on with a soft hackle off the back. And on the first cast, what do you know, we got a take. We knew we were in the butter and we had the right gear. The only issue was the angler throwing the gear wasn't very good, obviously, because he kept on missing some bold strikes. These fish were aggressive, and they wanted these flies. And it was just a matter of timing and good anticipation for me to get one of them on the end of my line and into the net. Where there's one dry fly eater, there's always more, and we had our fair share at dry fly fishing for the rest of the afternoon. I got it on camera, but I didn't see. Get the net, Davis. What? So we constantly worked our way upriver for the entire day and at our end point found ourselves 11 miles in the middle of the Smoky Mountains. The fishing didn't seem to struggle no matter where we went. The fish were active and ready to feed, and very opportunistic. 
It was an incredible time to experience with the boys. Up in the mountains, solitude, silence. All you hear is a fish taking a fly on the surface. Yeah, right there. You got get a net. Get a net. The soft tackle. From the soft tackle. Here, here, here. Mike's legs were tired, Davis was out of breath, and I was both, and the sun was going down with a long drive back home ahead of us. So we decided we were going to work our way back downriver and hit a couple of the spots that we'd had success on the day before. Pretty little wild brown. Oh, he's real pretty. This ended up being one of the best decisions that we made on the entire trip. As I caught the best brown of the trip, with beautiful thumbprints down its side and red spots, it was an epic way to end this trip. No. 
So when we got back to the car, it became apparent to us quickly that this had come to an end. That our reality, the real reality, that we had escaped into was finally over. And we're going back into our lives that society tells us we have to live. The life of complication and drama and social media. All the things that make us go crazy in this day and age. So it was important to us to make a pact, to come together, to say that we were going to escape into this reality every month for the rest of this year. And hopefully carry it over into next year too. As we made it home and we unpacked our bags, we thought, man, what a life we live. And we wanted to thank you guys so much for watching and supporting and allowing us to live out our dreams. If you've made it this far, please think about subscribing to our channel and following us on Instagram to join our journey of chasing elusive fish around the globe while also impacting people in a positive way. Seeing if we can't find some big inch chilling in some deeper holes. I don't want to put too much...